What is going on guys, D1 here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to lock your character into a spline. So at the moment, what I've got is, in this level, a player blueprint. Very simple, so I've got a couple of inputs. Under the input section here, I've got an axis mapping for moving right and left with the right and, and left keys, arrow keys, and an action mapping that uses spacebar for jumping. And I've gone into the player blueprint and just added those, and there's pretty much nothing else going on. I have a spring arm, and I have a camera, and let me just rotate the spring arm a little bit more. We want kind of a top-down view. Uh, that's all. So we have a spring arm, a camera, a little cone to show the direction of the character. If you want to see how to set this character up, I have a little mini tutorial to help you uh, catch up with this tutorial. But if you already know how to set up your own characters, then you shouldn't have any problems. Now, what I haven't done, which is usually standard, is I haven't created a game mode to spawn my character. And I also deleted the spawn zone that's in the level by default, because we're going to be dragging our player into the scene. And this is very important, and I'll show you why later on, but for now, just bear with me. So we're going to drag our player into the scene. Now, let's go back to the player blueprint. Actually, before that, if we test the game right now, nothing happens. We just get a floating camera. Again, I haven't set up any game modes. And all we did was drag our player into the game. But Unreal Engine doesn't know that we want to use this character as our player character. So let's go ahead and open the player blueprint. And select player BP or whatever you named your blueprint over here. And if you go down to the pawn section, uh, you can see there's an auto-possessed player. It's, it's disabled by default. I'm going to set it to player 0. And what this is going to do is if this character is in the scene, we're automatically going to take control of it. So now when I press play, I've got control of my character. He jumps, he moves back and forth, that's all he does. Alright, so now let's add the spline that we're going to be using. So I'm going to go ahead and right click over here in my content browser. I'm going to create a basic blueprint class, and I'm going to choose actor. And I'm going to call this level spline, but you can call it whatever you want. And I'm going to go ahead and open that. We've got nothing in it so far. We're going to add a component spline. But make sure you add a spline, not the spline mesh. And this is what we get, two points and a line in between, which is good enough for now. So we're going to go ahead and drag that into our level. And at this point, we have access to the spline point over here. We can all drag to create more of them. And this is just going to be the curve that our player is going to be trying to follow. Now the unfortunate thing about splines is there's no way as far as I can see for Unreal to show them in real time. So when I play, I can't actually see the spline. I'm not following it, but even if I were to follow it, I wouldn't actually see where the spline is. Uh, for the sake of testing, there are better ways to do this, but just for the sake of testing and simplicity, I'm just going to drag a couple of spheres where the spline points are supposed to be. So we're going to have one over here, and uh, let's see, let's go to top view, so we can see our spline better. You see I was already off there. And we also want to go to collision, and collision preset, no collision, just so it's not interfering with our player. And I'm just going to drag this along the spline, just so we have a little visual indicator as to where the spline is. Something like that. just so we can see what's going on. And you can delete these later on, and as I said, there are better ways to do this as well. Uh, we can go ahead and drag these up so they're kind of matching the spline. All right, so now when we hit play, we can actually kind of get an idea of how the spline is going. All right, so now that we can see our spline, how do we make our player attach to the spline? Well, we're going to have to start by letting our player know that the spline actually exists in the level. And to do that, we have to create a reference. So let's go to the player blueprint, add a variable. And we're going to call this variable level spline reference, but you can call it whatever you want. And under variable type, we're going to go ahead and type level spline, and we're going to select the object type level spline. So essentially, this variable is a reference to an object called level spline. However, this isn't good enough to actually connect our player to the spline. So we're going to select instance editable and that's going to allow us to edit this variable in any instance of our character and essentially what that looks like is if you select our player that we dragged into the level 
we have under the default section a level spline reference. We can go ahead and set that to the level spline. And what it's going to say is, what it's going to do is, the level spline reference that we have as a variable in this character is now going to be representing the spline that we have in this level. That's essentially what we selected here. So now our player knows that the spline exists. He can access the information on that spline. We can get started with locking the player to that spline. Let's go back to our player blueprint. Now first and foremost, when the game starts, we want our player to move to the closest point on the spline. Uh, at the moment he's over here, so when the game starts, we want to find the nearest point on the spline and just move the player over there. So if he was, let's say, over here, he's, it's going to move him to the start of the spline. So let's go ahead and do that on our player blueprint. On event begin play, which runs as soon as the game starts, uh, we want to get our capsule component set world location and we're going to connect that to event begin play so what this is going to do is it's going to take the capsule component and set it to a world location that we give it at the moment it's set to zero but we want to feed the spline information into this category now how do we do that well we have a nice reference here to use remember that's the reference we created we're going to get that and we're going to type in find. So I'm just right clicking, uh, dragging out and typing in find. And you can see there's a spline section here. So there's a bunch of useful options here. What we're looking for is find location closest to world location. We're going to drag that in. It's going to create another one of these nodes. That's fine. We're going to keep it there. Now, a couple of things we have to do is, first of all, we have to get the capsule component. And we have to get the world location of the capsule component which is representing our player's location. The other thing is you want to set this from local to world and then we can connect that to our set world location. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set it to teleport just so it's teleporting the character there and not kind of sliding him in place. Uh, so what this does is when the game starts we want to find the location closest to the world location. Find the location along the spline closest to the world location and the world location in question is the player's location and once we find that location we're gonna move the player to that location so in this case here's our spline here's our player this is the player's world location it's gonna say alright here's where your player is now the closest location it detects along the spline is gonna be somewhere over here so as soon as the game starts the player is gonna be teleported over here and let's test that out play and you can see our, our player actually moves to the spline. If we were to move the player elsewhere, let's say over here, it's going to detect that the closest location is probably going to be somewhere over here. And when we press play, you can see that happens as well. So wherever our character is at the start doesn't really matter. He's always going to spawn onto the spline somewhere. All right, so that's step one. Now, once we play this in its current state, the player is going to be starting at the spline. But if he moves, he's still not following the spline. And he can jump off and do whatever he wants, but he's not following the spline. So let's fix that. And fixing that is fairly simple. You pretty much already know how to do it. Uh, we're going to be copying this entire section that we created in the begin play. So essentially just the level spline reference, get world, the thing that we just made. We're going to copy that and we're going to paste it down here next to event tick. And just plug that in. And what this is going to do is every frame... Uh, of the game, it's going to make sure that the player is moving to the closest location along the spline. So nothing in the engine is going to be pushing the player off the spline because it's always going to be fighting with the event tick, which is going to try to make sure that the player is always on the spline. Now the one thing I'm going to do here is uncheck teleport, uh, compile and save, and now you'll notice when we're playing, the player is now following the spline. It's a little bit weird, but we're going to fix that later on. And the other thing is I can no longer jump. I can spam space all I want, but I'm not able to jump. And the reason for that, again, is when we press space, it's going to be moving the player up on the z-axis. That's how he jumps, right? Well, event tick here is telling the, the game engine that we want the player to be sticking to the spline. So even when we jump, it's not letting him jump because the spline is... Uh, because it would move him off of the spline. So how do we fix this? Well, there is a simple solution. Under find location closest to world location, let's disconnect the this line over here. 
and I'm going to go ahead and right click and split structure and I'm going to do the same over here split structure and as far as the information we get from the spline we're only going to be giving it the X and Y information and as for the Z we're going to be getting the using the get world location of the player of the capsule component that we already have we can break it break vector and drag in the Z over there so now what it's going to do instead is it's going to make sure that the player is sticking to the spline on the X and Y axis but the Z axis is going to be whatever the player is doing at the moment so if he's falling he's going to keep falling if he's jumping he's going to be allowed to jump let's see what that looks like play we can move and we can jump and we can also fall and you notice when we hit the edge of the spline it's just an abrupt stop which is good now the other thing is you notice that as my character is moving he's rotating to match the direction of movement but what he's not doing is he's not rotating to match the direction of movement along the spline as well he's just facing right and left and the reason for that is if we go back to our player blueprint as far as the movement system is concerned in the engine right over here here's our axis input here's our add movement input as far as the game engine is concerned, our character is only moving along the X and Y axis. Uh, sorry, along the X axis. But because the spline is moving the character along the Y axis as well, we should be seeing rotation. But the reason we're not seeing rotation is because uh, we're actually just setting the world location up and down the Y axis instead of moving the character in those directions. And the game engine doesn't interpret that as movement, so it's never going to make the character face that direction. So how do we fix that? Well, there's a simple solution to that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and extend this little... Well, actually, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to go ahead and find our add movement input. We're going to drag the level spline reference here. We're going to get that. And what we're going to do is drag this out, and we're going to type in find. And this time, what we want to find is find tangent, closest to world location. So we're going to do the same thing we did with find location. We're just going to get a reference to the capsule component. We're going to get world location. And we're going to plug that in. And we're also going to set the coordinate space to world instead of local. And then we're going to plug the result into add movement input. And what this is going to do essentially is it's going to look for our player's location it's going to find the closest point along the spline, which in this case would be somewhere over here. And it's going to find the tangent along that point. Uh, and that's essentially going to determine our player's rotation. So if we go back and play now, we can see that our character is actually rotating with the spline because it's using the tangent as information for the direction. And the reason why he's rotating now, unlike before, is because we're no longer just moving on the x-axis, we're moving along the tangent of the spline. Now, that's pretty much all you need to do to attach your character to the spline. Nothing, no input. Let's say you had a landmine, and if the player steps on it, it's going to explode and knock him off. Well, it's not going to knock him off the, spot, the spline. It might knock him back, but he's going to be winding along the spline as he flies back. And uh, you might say that since the player is now rotating along the spline and moving along the spline, we wouldn't necessarily need the event tick to be running. But we actually do, because what happens is if we disconnect this and we test it out, you can see that our character is facing the direction of the spline, and it looks fine. But slowly but surely, he's just kind of being disconnected from the spline. And you can also move beyond the spline, which is not good. So we're kind of breaking our game, as you can see. There's no consistency here when it comes to following the spline. And that's where the event tick comes in. We're making sure that the player is always strictly sticking to the spline. And that's all I have, guys. I hope you find this useful, and see you guys next time.